Next up, Curve partners with MetaMask to help institutions custody, custody DeFi assets. And this is something I never, I never really saw coming. And this is just the amazingness of the space. When you take a look at what potentially could happen, you're like, well, how are they going to do this? How are they going to do that? And then this is just one of those things where they're going to take a Curve, which is really institutional grade custody, and they're going to combine it with MetaMask, which makes things so much easier to transact and move things. And they're going to combine both of those great things together. So first of all, you got to ask yourself, what the heck is Curve? If you don't know, it's an institutional standard, as they say, for uh, just for security or for institutions to custody any type of cryptocurrencies. But what's crazy about it is that they don't use private keys because they say that a private key is a single point of failure. And I have to agree, uh, they are right. Yeah, when you just have one private key, you're, I mean, we've seen this in multiple, multiple exchanges where you had one crazy owner who just had one private key for all the transactions and he either dies or gets arrested and everybody's money goes away. Well, Curve said, that's ridiculous. Let's get away from that. It's okay for Joe Blow and Jane Blow like you and me. But if you get into like people who are holding like, billions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency it gets a little dicey so how they do that is a little unclear to me i mean i don't know the exact dynamics of how it exactly works but to, to really break it down and make it simplifies this is what they say Curve uses multi-party computation or MPC protocols that leverage ind independently generated shares of cryptographic material instead of private keys. This is done mathematically, distributed way to eliminate the single point of failure, and blah, blah, blah. So here's really what happens, right? You have multiple people throughout the whole industry. Let's say you have a C CEO, a CFO, a CTO, a CFO, or wh whatever you want to say, what whatever title you want to give it to them. You can have as many people as you want to. And however you make it in your industry, you say, look, we need six signatures or we need 20 signatures or we need three whatever it is we need three ways for people to sign to log in to put their computational information in so we can transact and move these cryptos if all these people don't get together it does not happen so there is no single point of failure and that's how curve's doing it so to jump back what they're talking about here is that you get all the enterprise controls security audits and everything that you great that's great with curve but with metamask in one click you get integration with all the DeFi protocols. This is coming from the, the CEO of Curve. And he states, a DeFi protocol can, can become valuable in a matter of seconds or minutes. We've seen that, especially with how fast this moves and how DeFi moves. From what it emerges, so you want to have the ability to access new protocols as soon as possible and not wait for your custody provider to integrate with that specific protocol. So what they are saying right here is that they can integrate at pretty much the speed of light. They don't have to wait for all these checks and balances, all these different things. They can go, you know what? We want to get into that. We want to use that. We don't want to have a bunch of programmers. We're going to absorb that and MetaMask is going to help us do it. So what could this mean later on? Well, as more things are being made in DeFi and more institutions want to get um, exposure to that asset, this is what they're going to go for. So uh, if you don't have any stock in Curve, maybe, I don't even know if they're a publicly traded company, but if they were, that would be something to look at. Uh, financial advice, just saying. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. So Wells Fargo, we meet again. Wells Fargo plans to increase coverage of crypto assets. So that's great. I mean, look, uh, we had actually covered this in today's earlier video. Actually, we didn't talk specifically about Wells Fargo. It was about uh, BBVA Bank, which they are going to get into cryptocurrencies and buying and holding and custody, all that stuff. And what we do these days, uh, well, we're actually going to do something new, which is we do little snippets. I, I try to do like little pieces and they're less than four minutes. And I just talk about pretty much the big story of the day. And I thought, I feel like this is the big story of the day. And then yesterday we did a story about how Facebook is going, coming on, under fire against 48 of the state legislators or 48 of the state attorneys, excuse me. And they have filed a lawsuit against Facebook for violating antitrust laws. And what they're saying is they want Facebook to be broken up. And we talked about how that would affect uh, Libra, I mean, excuse me, Diem as, it, as it's called now, which I'm just here to tell you, it's gonna crush it. So I didn't know how people would take to it for them being so short, but so far people have loved it. I mean, under four minutes, I kind of, you know, get, I kind of condense as much as I possibly can. And it gives you the, the, the most bare bone stuff. So uh, we'll keep doing this. We'll probably do a small snippet in the uh, early morning hours in the US. I don't know where you're at. And then later on, we'll do a, a longer format like we're doing right here.